And the heading I'd like you to make is annuities. A double N U I T I E S. Annuities. Just as I'm running off, does anyone have any questions about that graph? Great question. I did ask you that, didn't I? How many marks would you put on this question? So it actually depends on where in the exam it might be and whether there's other stuff going on, right? So if this was one part of the question, and then I'm going to ask you other stuff that you might do with this, right? Then you might say two marks, and what would happen is you're like, that's a lot of work for two marks. We wouldn't be stressing that much about, like, if you didn't find the y-intercept, we're like, mm, that's okay. There's other stuff that I'm focusing on, right? If this is the whole question, you could easily put four marks onto this, right? You got stationary points, you got intercepts, there's the general shape. You can get all the pieces of the puzzle and still draw a terrible looking graph through that, and that's going to be worth something, right? So does that answer your question? Or was your question? It was my question too. All right, so I said the heading was annuities. Does anyone know what an annuity is? Anyone? Hmm. All right, an annuity is a situation in which you're investing money over and over again, and the usual time period is, can you guess from the name? Every year, right? So there's this idea of an annual investment. The most common type of annuity that any of you will have heard about, you should have heard about it by now, is something called superannuation. Though actually, it's a very funny coincidence that they both have this same kind of root word. And if you are curious about where words come from, ask me later and I'll tell you. But for now, it's a bit of a tangent. Annuities are going to be where our geometric progressions really become useful. Okay? So I'm going to show you how to calculate this by hand today. We're going to use technology either on Friday or Monday, depending on when your exams are ready. It'll probably be Monday. Okay? Um, and I'm going to show you two different ways to do it, and then you're going to decide which way you prefer. Both of them are fine. Both of them will give you exactly the same answer. Both of them will give you full marks. When I show you the two methods, I want you to have a think about which one you like and why, because this choice will be up to you. Okay? So, two methods. Let's call the first one version one. We need a bit of a, uh, a situation, like a scenario with some actual numbers. So let's suppose what we're doing is putting in an annual investment of, I think I wrote down, $100. Okay, so this is not that massive. We don't need to make the numbers really complicated for now. Okay? So what this means is, as opposed to all the questions we've done so far this week where you just put money in and then you just let the interest do its thing. Okay? In year one, you put this amount in, gains interest. In year two, you do it again. In year three, you do it again, over and over again for the life of the loan. Okay? Because we're investing, we need an interest rate, right? So I'm going to give you a nice easy one. Let's suppose we have an interest rate of 10% per annum. That's huge. No one in the world will give you that, but we just want to get simple numbers so we can punch this into our calculator and understand what's going on, okay? All right, now this next line that I'm going to write is really important, so I'm going to put it in a different color. You don't have to do that, but you want to highlight it in some way, okay? We need to define what's going on, right? So we're going to let, and then we're going to introduce some pronumerals and some values and things like that, right? So a traditional way to say this is, let A subscript N be the amount after N years. So when we say amount, what we mean is, what's in the account? If I opened it up and had a look, after three years, it'd have three lots of $100 plus some amount of interest. If I looked in after 30 years, what's the total balance, okay? Let A and B the amount after N years. So now if I were to say A1, this is after N years. Even just with the small amount of information that's on the board, we actually need to account for some of the sort of time factors, right? So remember this $100? In general, what will happen is, that's at the start of the year. That's the timing of it, okay? And then 365 days pass, and then this happens. The interest gets calculated. It gets added on, right? So I'm going to put this as end of year for the interest calculation, okay? So therefore, if A1 is the amount after one year, two things have already happened, right? You've made the deposit. 
the interest has been calculated, right? So, not a rhetorical question, what's this number going to be equal to? This happened, then this happened. What would you like to write? $100, that goes in. And then we should multiply it by whatever does the interest calculation for us, right? In this case, that would be 1.1. Fantastic, that's it, full stop, okay? All right, now, we need to build up a pattern here. As with all series and sequences, we need to establish what's going on over time. So if I were to then say, well, what happens next year, right? Just like in the first year, two things happen. There's a new deposit, and then there's an interest calculation. So let's do each one in turn. We already have this amount in there, right? That was already there at the beginning of that year. So we put a new deposit in, and then all of that is in the account. Right? So that gets multiplied by 1.1. Following so far? We can do just a little bit to tune this up and make it a bit easier to read. I'm going to write this as 100 times, this is the first amount, right? 1.1, see that? Squared. Following where I got that from, I'm just expanding out here, okay? And then there's this other amount, 1.1. Okay. Let me pause. Can you please write down A3? Do it just like I've done, two lines, right? In the first line, you just say what's happened. There's been a deposit, then there's an interest calculation. In the second line, let's just tidy it up and make it a bit neat, okay? I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to do that. All right, so I'm hoping that's enough time by now because I let you have a head start and then I wrote it myself, right? You can see in red, I've just highlighted the two things that have happened, right? Here comes the deposit, and then there's the new interest calculation. And on the final line, what I've got is, there's everything expanded out, okay? Now here's why we went to the one, two, three steps. I'm trying to establish this pattern, right? Do you see on my final line, what have we been talking about this week? What kind of object is this? Geometry. It's a geometric progression. It's not just any geometric progression. What are we doing in here? We are, what's the operation? We're adding, we're taking the sum, so that means that not just a geometric progression, it's a geometric thing, starts with this, series, we drew a flu chart for it, right? When you add things up, it's a series, not a sequence, okay? So what I'm gonna write here is, this geometric progression has an A, a first value, an R, a common ratio, and then I need to know how many terms are in it so I can sum the thing, okay? Now, this of course is short enough that you could just literally punch it in as it is into your calculator, right? But that's only because it's got this many terms. You're gonna have superannuation situations where they literally say 30 years, 35, 40. You do not want to be putting all those into your calculator. So that's why we're gonna identify these and then use the formula, okay? You can write it in whatever way you like. I could order this backwards or forwards. I think it's easier just to start with the smaller numbers and go to the bigger ones. So in this case, my A is 100 times 1.1. I'm starting with this one, that's the smallest one, and this is the biggest one. Make sense? What's the ratio? From one term to the next, what am I multiplying by? 1.1, that's the interest calculation, right? And then lastly, how many terms do I got? I got three. One, two, three. The indices kind of do the work for you, right? So at this point, now that I've got A, R, and N, I can say A3 equals, and now I can pull out my sum of a GP formula, right? Um, I'll write it over here because I didn't give you guys reference sheets, just to remind you. Uh, which way am I going to do it? This way. Okay, so go ahead, actually put that down. Okay, someone call out for me. We've got a dollar sign out the front, and what are we gonna get? Jimmy, do you wanna? 364.1. and 10 cents. Okay, now, we haven't talked about it this week yet, except for me with a couple of you individually. This is the appropriate time. After you press buttons on your calculator and you get a final answer, this is the appropriate time to do what we call a sense check, right? I really hope a lot of you know what a sense check is, but some of you didn't when I came and talked to you about it, right? Is this number sensible? Is it reasonable? Based on what you're doing and how long you're doing it for, is $364 about right? 
which of course in this case it is, but if you looked at your calculator display and it said $30,000, you're like, something's gone wrong, I've pressed a, a zero too many times or I've minus the wrong thing. So it's always important to check at that moment, okay? Now, I just wanna go back in time. Put your pens down for a second and go back with me on the whiteboard to this line over here. See this spot? When I was your age, I was taught to do something different at this point. And I'm gonna show it to you in green. You can do it this way if you like, but I'm gonna ask you to tell me why I no longer do this. Okay, so have a look at this line. Forget about the fact that we're trying to get to this, right? Just looking at this long line here, can you see that there's a very obvious factorization you can do, right? There's 100 every time, there's a 1.1 every time, so you can just pull that out as a factor, and then you get this thing, see that? That's the GP. This is not a GP, it's just like a, an extra coefficient, as it were. This is a GP. What's the first term, because it's not that anymore? What's A? It's, it's just one, right? What about the ratio, has that changed? No, that's the same. What about the number of terms? Also the same. Anyone want to tell me when students, hundreds, thousands of them, did it this way, like I was taught, right? What do you think was the most common error that students made? That's the second most common mistake. It did happen a lot. This number, flying out the front, right? People just forget to put it in because they're focused on this and the formula. So it absolutely happens. Does anyone want to take another stab at something that happened even more often? We've already talked about it, talked about it yesterday. It's the fence post that gets you, right? See this power, how it's two, right? In this case, it's super obvious because you literally look and you say one, two, three. But if there were 30 terms, right? So you didn't obviously write all of them. You got like a dot, dot, dot somewhere in the middle. And then your last number is like 29. And you're like, ah, oh, 29, 29 terms. There are not 29 terms. There are 30, right? So that's kind of what's nice about this one. It makes it like slap you in the face obvious that there's one, two, and then that power is the last term. That's how many there are, okay? So I'm fine to write this. You don't actually even really save anything. You write one more line of working. Uh, it's, not as though, it's not as though this is a lot messier to write into your calculator. Does that make sense? Cool.